Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. You can uh, subscribe to the show. Uh, and all the links to everything we've talked about are linked up there in the show notes as well. Uh, and with that, let's go ahead and get into some of the cool stuff I found for this episode. Starting off over at heraldscotland.com, Facebook to build web drones. That's right. Facebook is working on a solar-powered drones to improve internet access around the world. So this isn't quite how it sounds uh, but still pretty interesting nonetheless. The social network has unveiled its new connectivity lab, which includes experts from NASA and was described as working on new aerospace and communications technologies. The company's founder, Mark Zuckerberg, said, we've been working on ways to beam internet to people from the sky. Uh, Yale McGuire, director of engineering for, for the social network, said we're looking at a new type of plane architecture that flies at roughly 20,000 meters because that's a point where the winds are at their lowest. It's above commercial airlines. It's even above the weather and actually can stay in the air for months at a time. These planes are solar powered and they sit there and circle around and have the ability to broadcast internet down. So pretty interesting. So basically what this is going to do is allow them to go and park a drone way up there, not quite at orbit, you know, 20,000 meters. It's not <laughs> not, not quite that uh, uh, up in orbit, but it, it's, uh, it's up there a ways. And basically they can, you know, go park one up there and have it circle around a given area. And as long as it's got internet connectivity uh, via some mechanism, it can beam down internet connectivity wireless internet connectivity to the uh, area it covers. I, I can totally see something like that uh, being very feasible, especially if it's solar powered. It doesn't have to be fast. It can be remote controlled and basically autonomously just fly to the various waypoints using GPS. So it should be pretty interesting to see what, uh, what comes of this you know, long term for sure. From uh, the Register Guard over at registerguard.com, Tesla is going to retrofit 16,000 cars to reduce the fire risk that we've been seeing where cars, uh, Tesla cars hit a, something in the road and uh, caused the car to catch on fire. Anyway, they have announced plans to reinforce the undercarriage of about 16,000 cars with high strength shields to reduce the risk of damage from a crash starting a fire. Elon Musk, the electric car company's chief executive, outlined the retrofit Friday morning. At the same time, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration announced it has signed off on the changes and was closing a probe into two fires that occurred in Tesla Model S sports sedans. So they have not, uh, the NHTSA has not identified a safety defect trend that would justify asking Tesla to issue a recall for the Model S. Um, it said that consumers should have their vehicle serviced promptly once they receive notification from Tesla Motors. So basically this has happened a couple times. It's, it's gathered a lot of news because, you know, <laughs> an electric car catching fire uh, because it hits something in the road tends to, you know, particularly when it's a new manufacturer, ten, tends to get uh, news coverage. So, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where uh, it just, that just happens. That's just how it is. From uh, dailymail.co.uk or the Mail Online in their science and technology section, uh, there's an article here called Birth of the Bionic Olympics. Competition will let athletes compete using exoskeletons and even brain waves in 2016. I thought this was pretty interesting. The Cybathlon uh, is, what, is what it's being referred to, which will happen in Zurich in October 2016, will include races for competitors wearing prosthetic limbs and exoskeletons. It's designed to boost interest in performance enhancing technology used by humans as well as enabling bionic athletes to compete together. Uh, competitors will be called pilots and the technology they use can be available commercially or developed for them as a prototype in a lab. So this is pretty interesting. I, th I thought I'd bring this up. 
it, it's only a matter, you know, basically it's only going to, it's a matter of time before something like this was about, was going to happen. So should be pretty interesting when it does. We'll be keeping an eye on it. It's still a ways away, 2016, but still nonetheless, pretty cool. Over at the BBC, at bbc.com and their science and environment news section, the, a comet lander checks in with Earth. The fillet lander, which Europe hopes to put on the surface of a comet later this year, has been reactivated after three years in deep space hibernation. So what, basically what's going on with this is it's currently riding piggyback on the Rosetta satellite. It was dispatched 10 years ago to rendezvous with the comet 67P Churimov Gereshchenko and was uh, itself awoken in January. Mothership and lander should arrive at the huge ice object in August. And so what's going to happen after that is there will be a period of mapping. Rosetta will then release Filet on its challenging bid to attach itself to 67P in November. So the comet is about four kilometers across. Uh, its gravitational field is very weak, and the 100-kilogram box of instruments will use harpoons and ice screws to try to hold itself down. So this is, this is one of those weird things where they're trying to land on, an, on something that has really weak gravity, and so it kind of has to drill itself in just to stay attached. So it should be pretty interesting. We'll be keeping an eye on this uh, as news articles are released. From foxnews.com, a 2018 mission Mars rover prototype unveiled in Mars Yard, testing ground in the UK. This is pretty interesting. It looks like a giant sandbox, except the sand has a reddish tint, and the toys on display are very expensive prototypes designed to withstand the rigors of landing on Mars. The European Mars rover unveiled Thursday at a Mars Yard testing ground in Britain is designed to drill beneath the surface of the red planet, searching for signs of life. It's been dubbed Brian by its creators. Earlier versions were named Bridget, clad in gold material that makes it look like a garish dune buggy, and Bruno. So, pretty interesting. Um, they're basically trying to develop an autonomous robotic vehicle that can be launched in 2018 as part of the European Space Agency's ExoMars program. Uh, which in itself is an ambitious program that starts in 2016 with the launch of a Mars orbiter and demonstrator landing module. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. Again, it's still a couple of years away, but pretty interesting nonetheless. From space.com, the X-37B. What is it? What? X-37B? The Air Force's mysterious space plane. The U.S. Air Force's unmanned X-37B space plane has flown three clandestine miss missions to date, carrying secret payloads on long-duration flights in Earth orbit. The robotic vehicle reassembles, resembles NASA's famous space shuttle, but is much smaller. The X-37B is about 29 feet long and 9.5 and feet tall, with a wingspan of just less than 15 feet. At launch, it weighs 11,000 pounds. Uh, so, interestingly, you know, it's it's one of those things that we don't really have a whole lot of inf information about. But uh, I thought this was an interesting story. It does give a kind of a brief rundown and history of the X-37B, and you know, kind of some of the some of the things that it's that that they think it's being used for. So, check it out. Should be pretty, it's a pretty interesting read. From uh, the Wall Street Journal, Tesla and Cuomo deal, cut a deal to keep New York stores. Electric car maker Tesla Motors has struck a deal Friday with New York Governor Andrew Cuomo and the state's car dealers that will allow it to keep five existing company owned stores as long as it doesn't open more direct sales outlets in the state. So, pretty interesting. Uh, I don't generally link to Wall Street Journal reports simply because they don't give you the full stories and require you to sign in and all that good stuff. But I, I thought it would be interesting uh, just, you know, as a side note. That will do it for this edition of The Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And uh, for those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. 
And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.